Because I had serious, serious um, morning sickness. I mean, I was sick. And anybody that's a mom that knows that will remember those days. I didn't ever drink water. The thing that saved me is that I took a ton of pills for my pregnancy. And it took me a lot of water to get those pills down. And I'm sure that that's the only reason why my kids are as good as they are. Histamines rise during pregnancy, so you can have, it's absolutely a need for more water. And the amount of hydration that the fetus gets will determine its future in its structure and its function. Did you know that? Now, I want to make something clear to you that I am not giving you the research um, notations under these because you will get them in the book that's forthcoming on your brain on water. And they will all be documented because it will take too much time for us to go through that here. But all of these things that I'm telling you are documented in the research. Overweight. Do you think an overweight person is going to need nine glasses of water a day to just metabolize what their body uses and throws off as waste? How many of you think that that'll be? No. But I would say 99.9% .9 of the overweight people do not drink enough water, and that's probably one of the reasons why they're tending to be overweight. It takes more water for a heavier person to complete their digestive and eliminative processes, and dehydration will slow the metabolic rate down. And also, on the other hand, the right kind of water will speed up the metabolism. Water moves the fat deposits, but I must tell you it must be negative um, ionized water, not positive charged water. In overweight, people get confused with hunger and thirst. Instead of going for water, they go for food, and so that creates more of an imbalance. And ionized water provides the energetic equivalent of food. Now understand what that's saying. Regular water will not do this, but if you are trying to lose weight and you take the ionized water, it will actually provide energy. It's like a source of food to your cells so that you have energy and your body can burn the fat. Sun exposure causes dehydration. The sun, when you're there, you know how dehydrated we get. And what do people do when they're in the sun and for several hours after? They go get carbonated, caffeinated, alcoholic sugar drinks. And every single one of those creates more dehydration. Of course, sweating creates more dehydration. My son is a great um, guy that works out. It's a water you can drink while you're working out. And you don't get that slush in your stomach and you don't feel a, an upset stomach from it. Stress causes dehydration. I look at the hours I used to work. I still work them, but I used to work them without drinking water. Now I have large glasses of water beside me all day long. And I would think, oh, I'll drink later. Oh, I know I need to drink. And my day would just go push, 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 push all day long. And I didn't do my body too good of good. And, you know, I've had to undo some of those things. But again, it was like I wasn't making the connections. And I believe I wasn't making the connections because I was so dehydrated, my brain couldn't put it together. And I didn't have anybody come and tell me that there really was a water. I had lots of people come with alkaline water and these machines out there. And I've been checking them out for 20 years. And I said, these don't work. They're not doing one thing for you. Why should I spend 1000 2000 Why should I spend anything on them? I don't want to give my clients this kind of water. So I knew because I was always testing them that what I was seeing on the market really wasn't working. Um, stress will use up hormones. It will use up neurotransmitters, making them work harder. It will use up your vital resources. And you have to have water to keep them functioning. Now, we all know that too much salt isn't good. And using the wrong kind of salt is bad for your body because it will grab water and dehydrate you. But using too much salt, especially on salty foods, because that's the wrong kind of salt, folks. They don't put sea salt on those things. We're going to tell you in a few minutes the right kind of salt to use and how to use salt to help your hydration. Of course, vomiting can cause dehydration. So when you see those... Um, 
information on any drugs or anywhere where it says causes vomiting, you know that it's possible it can cause dehydration. What are the dangers of dehydration? Well, if you're dehydrated as much as 5%, it can reduce in as much as 20 to 30 percent drop or make your physical activity go down. How many of you notice a drop in your energy when you're dehydrated? How many of you notice that when you take the right kind of water, ionized, microclustered water, you have an increase in energy? I mean, it's phenomenal what that can do. And if you take any supplements at all, it pushes them to the height of what they can do. So I can go 16-hour days now with no breaks and just 10% uh, reduction in your water can make you sick. 20% can even mean death. Isn't that amazing? Only 20% you can die. 1 to 2%, that's very, very little, folks in your brain can mean that you have problems concentrating and thinking. How many of you know somebody, I wouldn't ask you if you had that problem, but how many of you know somebody that has that problem? I think we all do, and at times we all do. Dehydration is a cumulative, it comes together. You see, the average person drinks 160,000 gallons of water in a lifetime, and 75% of the citizens around the world in developed countries are chronically dehydrated. I would have never believed that before my experience with water personally and what I've seen with my clients and our brain um, participants in our brain center. It's absolutely true. People are so dehydrated. One third of the Americans have such a weak thirst sensation that they mistake it for hunger. And look at the obesity that we have. Look at how many of us, we don't like it, struggle with weight. And it's one of the number one reasons is water. If 80% of your brain is water, which runs your pituitary, your hypothalamus, which regulates your weight, and if your body is 70, 75% water, and that is related to your hunger drives and your thirst. We know that water is a huge part of why we are not getting the weight that we want. Brain dehydration. It brings on feelings, if we're dehydrated, of anxiety and depression. The brain doesn't function properly. It uses up amino acids that are called our happy aminos that have to be working. The worse the dehydration is, the worse the depression and anxiety are. I wish, I wish, I wish I could go back to my clients who had such severe depression that they chose to go to uh, psychiatric drugs. I wish, and, and nutrients weren't doing it, folks, and maybe you know people like that. Diet, they were doing all the right things, and they still couldn't get past that, de that depression. And there are people that you're going to run into. And the reason is because they don't have the electromagnetic energy moved by the fluids in their brain through the right kind of water to get that depression to be able to do what it's supposed to do, go away. And anxiety is at a height in our world today. ATP is needed for the cellular energy. It's greatly reduced and there's no energy. And the poor brain just can't function. How many of you have had, oh, I just can't think today. I just, I can't get it right. You ever gone into a room to get something? Oh. What did I come in here for? We've all done it. And the only thing is it gets worse after you get 50 and 60 and 70, doesn't it? <laughs> and so that's your trigger. Boy, I'm not drinking enough. i got to get back and get my water, but get the right kind of water. What are the side effects of brain dehydration? One of the side effects is your body starts to use up the antioxidants because of its great need to get rid of body toxins. What is one of the biggest things on the market today? Antioxidants, it's a, millions of dollars are being spent on antioxidants because they're being used up because of a lack of water. Brain aminos are used up to make up for this lack of water. Tryptophan and tyrosine are amino acids that are mood stabilizers. Their deficiency makes us feel anxious and depressed. Dehydration and mental functioning. 
Folks, part of my passion is to help you, to give you a tool to get to teachers, to get into schools, to get into our public facilities where our children are being, um, you know, they're being labeled, they're being given um, drugs because they cannot have a good memory, they have a fuzzy memory, they can't remember math, and they can't focus. It's loaded in the schools today. And if they had the proper water, this would probably dissipate very quickly. Dehydration lowers the psychomotor processing speed, the memory, the concentration, and fatigue. How many kids and families do you know they come home and they have no energy left? They can't do anything. They want to sleep till noon on the weekends. They, they can't think through their school to get it done quickly. It's epidemic, folks. It affects their cognitive ability. It impacts their physical performance and their motor skills. So you are the tool. You are the conduit. You are the caucus to be able to go out and spread the word and use this information to share with people, to get into private schools, to get into church schools, where they can start giving it to their students and they can see the teachers won't be screaming at the parents to put their kids on those awful drugs. Brain issues related to dehydration. Does this look like a very hydrated brain to you? It doesn't to me. This is a real picture of a brain, and it's got a problem. Alzheimer's and dehydration, I have known for years in my practice, that has been research proven. Remember, what I'm telling you here is not my opinion. These are documented facts in research that Alzheimer's and all these other things that I'm going to relate to you are coming from documented studies that dehydration plays a significant part in it. Alzheimer's tends toward vasopressin levels, which is the, responsible for the water being in the right balance. Alzheimer's have increased dehydration. And one of the hardest things that I've seen in my clients that have had Alzheimer's parents or relatives, they can't get them to drink. Once they're past a certain level, it's very, very hard to get them to ingest the water. So what I say is if you can only get a little bit of water in people, for heaven's sakes, get the right kind of water in the people so that it's hydrating water. Anxiety and panic attacks, they are rampant. People are paralyzed with panic attacks and anxiety. And what happens? They don't have water. They've got their cup of coffee next to them on the road. They've got their coffee in the morning or they've got their soda at work. Sweating and, and nauseous, shortness of breath, dizziness, lightheadedness, unsteady and fearful. These are all signs of dehydration and, what, and anxiety and panic attacks. This is something that when families deal with anorexia and bulimia, if they would know how important hydration is, they could probably save a lot of money and a lot of stress. I've dealt with families with this problem. How many of you have ever known anybody with this problem? It's very serious and it's very life-threatening. And they have severe dieting issues. They have little or no intake of fluids. They starve themselves. They binge. They vomit. They lose their appetite. They have anxiety, sleep disturbance, fatigue, lack of well-being, depression, irritation. All of those are brain problems. All of those are brain dehydration. Comas. I'm dealing with several people right now in comas. And I've found every single one of them is like 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 percent hydrated in their brain. They're, they're barely hanging on, and they've been in these comas by God's grace for a long time. And if they would only get them on the water, so far these families haven't been too able to do that, but they can move them because the water is the electrical force that will wake up the brain and help them to be able to function and, and get things moving. It can, comas... See, the, the brain and the body shuts down, and when the body is so dehydrated, well, we think because they had a brain accident and they got it hit on the head that, the, you know, that they can't come out of that coma because of that. Folks, I'm telling you, they can't come out because their body doesn't have enough energy in the brain or in the body to do the connections to get it to wake up. In an advanced terminal cases, dehydration is a very important factor. 
and hydration is a key factor in coma and delirium. It's very important that you use microclustered ionized alkaline water to quickly and efficiently hydrate the brain. Bipolar. It's a very serious issue. Some people have it very, very bad. It causes anxiety, depression, rapid mood changes, compulsions, loss of energy and irritation. And again, it's related in scientific studies to dehydration. Depression. Now, I've told you some about this already, but it's a huge thing. I think that we would see a major turnaround. It's one of the number one drugs that's given out is kind of drugs for, de for depression. When the brain is chronically dehydrated, all the functions suffer. The brain needs tryptophan, an amino acid, to make the serotonin. You've heard of the drugs that create serotonin and help that to balance. It really doesn't balance them, it makes them more dehydrated, which then makes melatonin, which helps them sleep and get rest so they can function in their day. The amount of serotonin made is dependent upon adequate what? water in the brain and the right kind of water. Moods. How many of you ever had moody kids? I had a moody husband and an angry husband and he would not be upset with me telling you this because we fixed him <laughs> and he's thrilled to be fixed. <laughs> But um, he was a forceps baby, so he had some brain injury. And folks, by the way, all of these issues where they have more of a tendency when they get dehydrated, because not all of us, when we get dehydrated, go bipolar or go anorexic or go into depression. I believe there's plenty of evidence in the research to show us that they have an incident, shock or trauma or some kind of an event that has caused an injury in the brain. And in my husband's case, this was his forceps birth. So we put him through our um, brain programs and helped the circuits to reconnect uh, and you know he was doing so much better. But since he's been in water, he has seen even more improvement and more help. But there's one little time when we're driving long trips. And what is it with men that they don't like to drink? They got the easiest job in the world to stop anywhere and, you know. And women don't have that privilege in life. Well, my husband won't drink very much, you know, on the road, and I'm guzzling and stopping all the way along. And he'll get real fussy when we're on trips. And I just say, you're just dehydrated, honey. And he is. So it's associated with negative mood. When you see yourself getting grouchy and you know others around you, it's because they are dehydrated. Multiple sclerosis, a big problem. It's very sad to see this. You can get well from multiple sclerosis, but it means many scars. And one of the causes of exacerbations is dehydration. Not drinking enough water, drinking other beverages that are like caffeine, caffeinated beverages, soft drinks, alcohol. I know a number of people that have MS that have gotten over it as I've worked with them in my practice because they really went on a strict diet and did a lot of things, but others have not because they refuse to drink and they continue to drink their sodas and their dehydrating beverages. And dehydration doesn't necessarily cause it, but it makes it w much worse. Here's one that everywhere I go, I have people tell me, oh, and yeah, my, 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 this relative, friend, acquaintance has schizophrenia. We don't hear about this because a lot of, nobody's going to come up to you and say, I have schizophrenia. But schizophrenia is very much related to dehydration and the risk, high risk of dehydration further from the psychiatric medications that they're on. And they show depression, they show delusions, hallucinations, remember coma and being delirious, lack of water, no energy, again, brain doesn't work right, confusion, stupor, comatose-like, and suicidal. Um, suicide among our teenagers is very high. I am of the personal belief most of our teenagers that I work with, and I was a counselor in the alternative, the kids that couldn't make it in the regular school, they were the, the special kids. So I worked with them for many years. And they never drank water. Of course, I didn't either. But they had 
more problems, more traumas, more things that were pushing it. And a lot of these kids get suicidal. Seizures and dehydration. One of the most incredible things that I have witnessed in our brain camps is that the kids that come, they come, some of them, not all, several um, in spectrums on the autistic spectrum or others, they have seizures, they're on heavy medication, some of them have shunts or things put into their brain to control the seizures. They get there and they don't have any more seizures and I'm going, hmm, I think there must be a connection here. We're putting them on a lot of water and um, they choose to work with their own doctors to get off the meds and we're seeing maybe one seizure the whole two weeks is pretty much what we see when they've been having them every day. Pretty amazing when you see that and pretty much documented by research that says dehydration is a trigger for a seizure and it can lead to coma and death and ticks is a disorder that can be related to dehydration. Now how many for Tourette's and these kind of things ever say it's dehydration? But folks, this is a common, not very common, but it's common enough amongst some in the population and it's not a very fun thing for people to have. And the research says dehydration is a factor and a very big factor. Strokes and heart attacks related to dehydration. You've heard of people being out on the basketball court and you know they're sweating and they're working hard and they go off the court and they drop over dead. You heard of that? We've all heard of that. It's dehydration. They were probably drinking something, you know, of those uh, special drinks that they, you know, that the people in called gators drink, you know. Um, <laughs> And when we don't have enough water, remember our blood needs 80% water. It's a flowing river through us. It builds cholesterol, which causes strokes and causes clogged arteries. And when we take the drugs for that, we get further dehydrated. And when there's insufficient water washing in and washing out, we, the, the membranes seal off. Um, so further water is lost. And when the dehydration blood, the blood gets thicker. Why do people have bypass surgeries? Why do people have events of heart attacks? Because they're dehydrated. What a simple solution, guys. And it's so economical. Do you think that $4,000 is cheaper in getting a water machine?